Once again, you need to measure the neck of your mannequin, male or female, however that is, and uh, we'll get some numbers to Savannah. But you also need to measure from center front, which is the nail right here in the hollow of the throat at the front of the mannequin, to the shoulder seam, which there's a nail on the shoulder seam, to the center vertebra in the back, which there's also a nail there, and we need that segmented off in pieces. So I need to know what the total distance is, but I also need to know what the front chunk is and what the back chunk is. You're going to have three numbers total. Front chunk, back chunk, total chunk. Now remember, this is not total circumference. This is just half the body. So you're measuring two quadrants of the body and then what the total half is. And then just make a note on your personal paper, whatever, whether you're doing male or female. Is all the numbers are going to be the same regardless of mannequin except for our very first measurement we do. So what is the quickest video editing software that's easy for idiots to use? No, but all my small devices are all Apple. I just need to be like able to speed up my scissor cuts or yeah. edit out this waiting time. Yeah, I think you can do it on your phone because it's just, I mean, you just do three times speed and then you choose the text in and it does it. Okay. Um, I might have to let you show me how to do that. Yeah. But yeah, I would say iMovie is super easy. Especially, do you have an iPad? Uh huh. Yeah, that would probably be the way to go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I don't need some super complicated adding. Yeah. And yet my kids can take iMovies in like two minutes. Yeah. So not that my kids are idiots. That's not what I'm saying. We need to edit out this part. Okay. So we're just, we're not using any sloper for this. Uh, we are just drafting rectangular. So we're drafting out of the men's wear book. So it's all going to be math and gridded. Okay. You need to draw a rectangle. I'm not a rectangle, but an L shape first and the line this is going to be point a right here my point over here is going to be c and i'm going to put b in the middle so from point a a is center back so b is going to be shoulder which means if i was doing one two a female collar b would be there one two three four a would be here But that is full scale, not half scale. This is where I always go wrong. Because this is the size we're looking at total. Does that make sense? So even though I measured that it's three inches, it's really an inch and a half, right? From center back. So this is B and then it's two inches beyond that. One, two. This becomes C. Does that make sense? Um, yes, I do. Let me put a couple of extra pieces of paper under here. And then... Just makes my drafting have to be super clean. Okay, so we're going to start out with A. Is that better? Mm -hmm. And we're, A becomes the center back. So it is coming up the vertebrae. Now I need to know the distance between center back and shoulder. What if they're different? What do you mean if they're different? Like one side is the one thing here, like one is the short and one is the long. That's just difference on how they padded the mannequin. Okay. So we're just going to split the difference and go with an inch and a half okay. for a female mannequin. So an inch and a half, that turns B right here. 
And then the front from the shoulder seam to the front on a female is two inches. So that becomes C. So we're just gonna draw that line. And then we're gonna make an L. Keep it perpendicular, keep it a right angle. I am not worried about distance here yet. Is that, is the marker sharper? Yeah, it's all right. So A to B is half your distance or is that? A to B is one quadrant of the back. So it's half of the back. And then B to C is half the front. Okay. So if my, so if from shoulder to front neck, it's half of that. Are you doing a male? Mm -hmm. So I think total front is five inches and total back is four inches. Yeah. So your A to B is going to be two inches and your B to C is going to be two and a half. Yeah, just to make sure. Yeah, because that measures each quadrant half of the neck. Mm -hmm. So then that's like two and three. Because what happens is we're going to put this on a fold. Right, okay, that's what I thought. Or we're going to put a seam up the back, one or the other. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to put in our benchmark marks up the longitudinal line, not across the lateral line. So first of all, we need to decide how tall our band height needs to be. Now, if we're looking at a shirt collar, the band is the part where your necktie sits. So it just stands the collar up away from the shirt. So you have structure for a necktie to sit up against the neck. Then the collar is the part that extends from the stand and comes out and folds down and covers the stand and gives you points on the collar. So the two separate pieces, the stand is usually about an inch tall, three quarters of an inch tall, somewhere in there. And then your collar is however tall the band is, plus a little extra, because it has to just come up for a little fold and then come down and cover. Okay, so we're gonna have some gaps in the middle. So how tall do you want your band height to be? Like I said, traditional is about three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, depending on where you wanna be. For half scale, to make my math easy, we're just gonna say stand is an inch. So I'm gonna do a half inch because I'm doing half scale. So that is gonna put in a point right there. That becomes D. Then I'm going to extend up three eighths of an inch from there. But once again, that is full scale, not half scale. So that's three sixteenths, one, two, three. So it's a little itty bitty gap. That becomes E. Then we're gonna do three fourths of an inch full scale from there, which is three eighths. One, two, three. That becomes F. Then everything above that is collar fall. So it needs to be however tall your stand is, which is A to D, however tall you made that, plus an inch to three quarters of an inch, depending on how much coverage you want. So I'm gonna do half inch just cause then half scale, that makes it a quarter inch, which means I'm gonna go from F to G as three quarters of an inch. It just makes my math clean and easy. How did you get F again? How did I get F? Yeah. F is full scale, three quarters of an inch up from E. So half scale, it's gonna be three eighths of an inch. Now, when I used to do this on the board, I would write these measurements and like this would be one inch, but then I would do half scale off to the side. That means E to D, this is three eighths of an inch. Half scale is three sixteenths. And E to F is three fourths of an inch, but half scale is three eighths of an inch. And then F to G is whatever A to D is, plus half, oops, not a parenthesis, plus half an inch. So I'd be adding a quarter of an inch. Does that make sense? So without the parentheses is full scale, with the parentheses is half scale measurement. It's just so you can keep your math straight. This is where I always go wrong doing this color is I forget to translate one of my numbers into half scale coming out of the book. Okay. So now that you've got all those lines, I'm going to use a lighter pen to draw a guideline 
from E all the way out to equal to C and just complete a rectangle. This does not become a real line though. So be super light with your pencil because once again, it's just a guideline. So I can complete the box and have some reference. This point right here becomes K. Nope, becomes L. Okay, that's as far as we're going right now. I know where L is. I know where A, B, C, D, E, F, and G is. We're gonna fill in all the spaces between G and L right now. Okay. <clears throat> we are gonna draw a perpendicular line at C. We are gonna come up half an inch from C. That's full scale. So this becomes H. So it's half an inch up, which means quarter inch up from you. Needs to come straight up the line. From B to H, you're gonna draw a gradually curved line. And then the bottom part of your stand from B to A is already drawn. Okay, so just slightly curve it. I just kind of look at it with my pen and know what a diagonal line would be, a straight line. And then I just add just a tiny bit of swoop to that. Does that make sense? This little swoop here is pretty arbitrary. We're just trying to get it to curve because it is standing straight up against the body, perpendicular to the shoulder. And yet it has to drop down into the hollow of your throat. So we're just trying to get this standing up piece to make an additional curve. So we need to contour it. So we've got a third of the collar or a little less than half of the collar already as a flat line that comes across the back. Right here is where it's kind of breaking on the collarbone right in here and curving around. So that's usually where I start curving up to eight. Now we're gonna draw your extension for your button, which all is determined by how big of a button you're putting in here. If we're doing half scale, let's assume we're putting in a quarter inch button which means how big does our extension need to be? The width of the button plus half the button clearance on either side. So if we're doing a quarter inch button, we need a half inch extension. So if this line were to continue beyond H at the angle that it's already coming off at, If that curve were to continue, this becomes I, whatever the width of our extension is. We are gonna draw a perpendicular line at H following this extension. And it is going to be out to this top guideline that we drew right here. This needs to be a right angle. Then we're gonna continue that out here at I, and it needs to be the same length, which means it's gonna go beyond the line. So I measured how long this is here. And I continued that distance here. This also needs to be at a right angle. Now, if you'll look at your math very carefully, this distance here, check how close it is to this distance here. There's 
between D and A, see how your distance is from this line to H. See how close they are in relation to each other. Okay, you might need to extend this half that distance. So extend this like an eighth of an inch farther which means also from I to this new point, which the book says it's still gonna be L, mine is never still L. So make it L junior. Okay. Now, we're also gonna kilt in this just a little bit into the neck. So right here where it hits the line, wherever this point is ending, I want you to shift it into the center back by an eighth of an inch, which half scale is like a frog's butt hair. I mean, it's just a teeny tiny little bit. This becomes K, which shifts this line, which shifts this line. Just a tiny, tiny bit. It's almost negligible. Hey, how's that? So much, so much better. Okay, now we're gonna come in from D and we're gonna mirror this line at D. We're gonna hit these points, okay? This point and K, so it's L junior junior. It's gonna come from here, hit K, Come in at D. Oh. Start to mimic my curve. Then you're gonna choose what you want the front of your stand to look for. The, the book is like, draw a diagonal line in from here, have it be half the distance, and it's this huge mathematical thing. Well, look at this. Whoop, just did it. That's it. You just don't want it square because those points don't always line up and it's right at the hollow of your throat or the base of your Adam's apple and it becomes an irritation and a chafe point. So you just want to round out those edges so that right against the most tender spot on your neck, it doesn't rub. And when you're finished with seam allowance and everything else, your piece will look something like this when it's outside of the drafting lines because this line here and the rounded part here and the curve down here, that's your stand. This becomes the fold at the back or you cut two and have a seam up the back. I like my collar to be all one piece if I can because that just minimizes chafe points. If I'm wearing a button up shirt and I'm buttoning all the way to the top, whether I'm wearing a choke tie or not, I mean a necktie or not, whatever you wanna call it, if I have a chafe point right here at the front of the neck, but I also have a seam of the back of the neck, I'm never gonna wear that shirt buttoned. I'm gonna not wear that shirt at all because that shirt has become an irritation. So I try to do no seam up the collar. It lays flatter, it hangs straighter on the body, it doesn't chafe on the body, it looks cleaner. It also means you can do collars on the bias or out of satin, out of velvet, any of the weird fabrics and not be complicated by a seam up the back. So that's your stand. Now, we have around the neck, dipping down from the shoulder, a stand up, a stand up and fall down, all of that happening in the same spot. So when we develop the collar, we need to have the stand here because we're developing it in opposite curves and in opposition, but they have to work together. Does that make sense? Not yet, but it will. Okay, we just like skimmed through half the book without actually going step by step. Awesome. Love it. Okay, we're going to draw another guideline straight up from B. And just make sure it extends at least to G. And then draw a guideline from G over and have it extend at least to C. 
And so just have C extend up. Okay, so you've just got these two gridded boxes. Now this gap in between D and E, we leave that gap. That's non-usable space. And the gap between E and F right here at the center back, that's also a gap of unusable space. But where the collars are gonna touch is right here at K. They're gonna touch here. And eh, crap nuggets. See how I always say I do it wrong? This guideline right at E, it shouldn't be at E. It should be at F. So sorry for the confusion. At least I figured it out before we started drafting. So just for ease on camera, I'm just gonna white out this one. So we can pretend it didn't happen. How's that? So much better. Okay, so right here, this point right here becomes S. This point right here becomes T. This point right here becomes P. This point right here, we're not gonna worry about. I want you to draw a guideline from S to K. This is not a real line. It's just gonna help you know the directionality of how this is gonna go. We're gonna develop the points on our collar. And what happens if you want really deep like Elvis points on your collar? Is this math gonna work? No, you need more space here. This space here is determined by how deep your point is. So the book has given us these amounts but if you're designing a much deeper curve here, a deeper point here, you're going to want to space these out farther. That distance between F and E. Does that make sense? Okay, so from F to S stays flat. From S to K, using this as your don't drop below, you're going to do a slightly curved line. The book says to stay an eighth of an inch above this line, once again in half scale. That's difficult to gauge. So, and it's going to curve down to K. From F to S, that stays real. So that's the bottom edge of my collar all the way to K. This point from F to K and from D to K get sewn together. Those are the parts that touch each other. From P up here, we're going to come, I'm a total liar. Up here is your point, not down here is your point. This is the point where it comes together at the neck. Up here at P is where we develop our point. So for a regular point at P, the book tells us to come out an inch to an inch and a fourth, depending on how deep you want it. So we're gonna come out this way, an inch to an inch and a fourth. So I'm just gonna say an inch because it keeps my math clean. Right here at P, that becomes Q. What the heck? Yeah, so the book says an inch and I did half an inch. The book actually gives you a range an inch to an inch and a half. If you're doing Elvis, then you'd do like two inches. Just depends on what you want. Then the book is going to have us draw a line from Q uh, through from K. Let me start over. From K through Q, and we are going to continue a quarter of an inch, full scale. Once again, I think this is all dependent on what your points are gonna be. But a quarter of an inch, that's an eighth of an inch and half scale. And that becomes R. Then you're gonna draw a slightly curved line from R 
to T, and then from T to G remains the same. So, slightly curved line from R down to this line, out to T, T to G remain the same. This goes on a fold. This goes on a fold. And you have a collar and a stand with already notch marks because you know that this line right here is the shoulder. You know that this line right here is button extension. So they must match right here at K. They must match right here at S and whatever this is. The book says M is actually this point, which makes no sense to me. So I don't know, let's just say that's M. Which means I would notch it right here. I'd notch it right here. I'd notch it right here. This gets attached to the shirt at the shoulder and the center back. This gets attached to the stand at shoulder and center back. This gets attached to each other because your collar comes up and falls down, which means you need two of these and two of these, even though they're cut on the fold. Does that make sense? Once you seam allow them, seam allowance them, bam, then they look like this. This would be right side together. You'd sew this together extension and it becomes the top of a shirt collar and a stand easy peasy What's that middle space? this middle space that just allows the fabric it's non-usable negative space okay. yep so on our drafting pieces this piece right here is the collar this piece right here is the stand everything else about this drafting piece does not matter it's kind of like the dark space in a princess line. We've taken this out for shaping. Just if we're flat pattern drafting, this is how the math has to look in order to get that. If we were draping, we wouldn't have that. 